Ultra Beasts have always been some of my favorite Pokemon in the game. I'm fascinated with the lore surrounding them, their supernatural appearance, and the presence they have in so many competitive scenes. Wait, haven't we already done this before? So around a year ago, I made a video where I found and caught a shiny Nihiligo, which you should totally watch by the way, where I briefly mentioned at the beginning of the video how some previous Kartana hunt inspired my then desire for a shiny Nihiligo. Kartana has such an exquisite shiny, so the moment I laid my eyes on it, I knew it had to be mine. Fortunately, after 100 hours of brutal soft for setting, I finally encountered my favorite shiny Ultra Beast. Seeing that blue Kartana on my screen overwhelmed me with the most relief and confidence I've ever experienced in my life. A hunt edict started four years ago, and a Pokemon I've soft for setting over 13,000 times for is finally mine. Wow, I skipped over some of the details there, huh? So this video isn't coming with any surprises. I obviously already have it, but I figured I'd tell the story of my longest and most draining hunt yet, and the one that almost ended it all, my hunt for a shiny Kartana. So for the 21 of my subscribers who were here before my Kiorum video, God, I'm making references everywhere. You know this actually isn't the first Kartana video on my channel. That is because around a year ago, I uploaded a live reaction of getting that shiny Kartana before I got into all the YouTube stuff. But I then decided I want to try producing something professional regarding my next shiny hunt, and thus, my Nihiligo video was born. So just to clarify, the Nihiligo video actually made a reference to that previous shiny Kartana reaction video. You won't find that video anymore on my channel because I ended up deleting it in favor for the one you're watching right now. I'm thinking of uploading it again and unlisting it if you want to see the full reaction, so if I do that, the link to it will be listed in the description below. Wow, that was a lot of context for something completely pointless that you probably do not care about. I should get back on topic, so let me preface our story with this. It was the fall of 2017, and Pokemon Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon were right around the corner. I remember feeling quite eager about these titles since I just came off really enjoying Sun and Moon. In fact, Generation 7 is my second favorite generation of all time, behind 5 as you probably can guess. A little side note, one of my bold predictions I've been saying for a while now is that Generation 7 will age just as well as Generation 5 did today. Hated at first, but years later a staple of the franchise and loved by fans. Back to what I was saying. My number one reason why I loved Sun and Moon so much is because of the Ultra Beasts. It's a concept that I endear simply because of how foreign, exotic, and frankly alien these Pokemon look compared to the rest of the Pokemon in the franchise. I always chuckle a little whenever I hear the complaints made by people who clearly don't follow the franchise too closely, or are too wrapped up with previous titles, that the Ultra Beasts don't even look like Pokemon. Yeah, that's the point. Back to what I was saying again, yeah, they're one of my favorite types of Pokemon in the game. I don't know how else to transition from that. As Sun and Moon aged its first year, one particular Ultra Beast really grew on me due to its funny nature and design, as well as its ridiculous capabilities and competitive. That would be Kartana. Although I did take Fermosa to my first ever Sun and Moon VGC tournament, Kartana always stayed true as my number one favorite and coming fresh into Pokemon Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon, I already knew who my number one target shiny would be. There's just one problem though. I've never really done a shiny hunt before. You see, I'm a competitive player. Always has been, always will be. And with the release of every new Pokemon game, my friend and I would get together and we would pull an all-nighter and beat the games as fast as possible so I can start stacking up on some battle-ready competitive Pokemon to use for team building the very next day. I didn't have the time to do a shiny hunt, nor the patience. Every hour wasted not finding a shiny could have been an hour applied practicing VGC in my eyes. So I rarely felt the desire to hunt for something that probably wasn't good enough to use in battle. This time, however, was different. I wanted to try something new, and for the people who know me, that's a very rare occurrence. Right after I beat my Ultra Sun, I was heading not straight to the daycare, but through Ultra Space to find myself a shiny Kartana. One of my favorite additions in Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon that wasn't present in the previous titles is the ability to encounter and catch an infinite number of Ultra Beasts. 
I just think it's a really cool way to demonstrate that the Ultra Beasts are not this rare, exclusive creature like how every main legendary is, but rather one part of a whole entire species that inhabits a completely separate universe. It gives the Ultra Space life, and also gives us a glimpse into the world in which they came from and how personalized each realm is to every Ultra Beast. Ultra Forest, which is Cartana's habitat, is a lush thicket complemented with various natural elements you would find here on Earth, such as boulders, trees, flowers, and bushes, but this biome rests thousands of light years away from any civilization. So we think. Ultra Forest is also the only world in Ultra Space to host trainers in the Ultra Forest Cotton Boy. The Cotton Boys are human-like figures that resemble Cartana in many ways. As you traverse your way up the Rocky Passage, you will face two Cotton Boys in battle, each of them equipped with one Cartana, which oddly enough are not contained in Pokeballs. I also found out that the strange speech displayed once they are defeated or interacted with bears some resemblance to a Japanese martial art known as Kendo, so that's something pretty interesting. Moving on, once the two Cotton Boys and the respective Cartanas are defeated, atop you will find the Drawn Sword Pokemon, waiting for its worthy trainer to show off its skills by slicing this rock for some reason. Once again, I cut a worthless object. Upon pressing A, and right before it decapitates you, you enter a battle with this skillful swordsman, and if strong enough, are granted a chance to capture UB Blade. And once captured, that's it. You've quelled Cartana and fulfilled your obligation initially given to you by the first Cotton Boy. Nice job. <sighs> I wish it was that easy. No, let's take part of that process and repeat it, uh, I don't know, 12,000 times? Yeah, that's right, this is gonna be our home for the next year. So, on November 18th, a day after a release date, yeah, I know I had no li I still don't have a life. I set up camp right in front of Cartana, popped the save, and started resetting. This was actually easier than I made it out to be. All I had to do was press the same buttons in the same pattern over and over until I got it? That doesn't seem that hard. 12,000 softy sets later. Patrick! I just was sent it 12,000 times for a shiny Cortana and still haven't got it! It is now December of 2017 and the year is about to wrap up. And if you haven't gotten the hint yet, no shiny Cartana. While all my friends were enjoying this new game and all the offerings the postgame has, I was stuck in Ultra Forest, software setting for Cartana. And no, this was before I owned six and a half DSs, so this was a solo console hunt, baby. I was taking this 3DS everywhere I went, in the car, to school, my grandparents' house for Christmas, anywhere I went, this thing wasn't leaving my side. Honestly though, I never expected it to take this long. All the YouTubers I watched made it look way easier than it actually was, I was expecting to get this thing in like, a week or two, not for it to spill into 2018. I've been going at this thing for quite some time, almost two months now, and frankly, I'm over it. If this is what shiny hunting is like, then I quit. I'm going back to what I do best. I'm going back to what I like, and that would be VGC. So, true story, yeah, I gave up. This was my only copy of Ultra Sun at the moment, and I was really falling behind on competitive. Being that I haven't played or let alone started in nearly two months, I was expecting this hunt to only take a couple weeks, and once I wrapped up, I can use that shiny Cartana online and build some cool teams around it. Boy, that didn't work out. The official VGC 2018 format was just a few days away, and I had to make a decision. Continue this hunt and fall further behind on competitive insight than I already was, or give up this hunt, enjoy the glories of the postgame, and dive into a format that I've been eager to play for a few months now. I think I made it obvious that I chose the latter. Sorry, Cartana, but I'm gonna have to put you on hold. This Dialga. This Dialga is perhaps one of the most influential Pokemon when it comes to how I spend my time now. I was never too into shiny hunting. I mean, I did some hunts and let's go here and there, but it was never anything I was big into. That was until this Dialga I found by accident. Now, how did I stumble upon a full odd shiny legendary Pokemon by accident? I'll explain. A little something about me is whenever I go on vacation, I like to play through an old Pokemon game whenever I have my downtime. I went to Florida again a couple years back, and this time, I wanted to play through Diamond. Spoiler alert, I didn't finish the game in time, but after I flew back home, I made sure to finish the playthrough. In doing that, I had to catch Dialga. 
I believe I've mentioned this before, but for all my playthrough Pokemon I catch, I try to find the ones with the best nature possible just to give me the extra edge and totally not because of competitive OCD. So, when I approached Dialga, I saved in front of it and started software setting not for a shiny, but for a modest or quiet Dialga can add to my team. Let me introduce to you a little something called luck. After around 15 resets for a modest Dialga, a shiny one popped out of nowhere. I actually wasn't even paying attention to my DS, I was on my phone. That was until I heard shiny sparkles emanating from my DS, and you can probably anticipate my reaction at 2 o'clock in the morning. All in all, what I'm trying to say is that Dialga was the Pokemon that got me into shiny hunting. Dialga was the Pokemon that revived my confidence and believability that I, myself, can hunt and find a shiny Pokemon, and ever since then, I've been looking for those sparkling pocket monsters. Alright, let's see your infant, uh... Oh yeah, sorry about that. Fast forward to roughly a year later, so early 2022, and I was already an experienced shiny hunter. However, I wasn't fulfilled yet. No, I wouldn't consider myself an expert until I claimed one particular Pokemon who's been itching away at my mind for four years now. You know who I'm talking about. It was time. It was time for me to claim my number one most desired Pokemon of all time. This time, however, is a little different. Not only do I have much more experience and time to find this shiny, but I also got something else to help me out along the way. It took some time, but I was able to complete the Alola decks and obtain myself the shiny charm. Now this will be of great help, because to my knowledge, the Wormhole Ultra Beasts are actually affected by the shiny charm, unlike gift Pokemon such as Type Null and Poiple, which remain full odds regardless if you have the shiny charm or not. Now with my newly acquired shiny charm, my odds of finding this dreaded Kartana shrink to 1 in 1365 instead of full odds which is 1 in 4096, so hopefully it'll be a little quicker. Well, there's nothing else for me to mention other than it's time to resume this hunt. I should mention that I don't remember the exact number I left off on 4 years ago because I lost the counter, but I do remember it was around the 12,000 mark. That I remember for sure. That number left a stain in my brain. After everything was prepared, I started around February of last year, resetting for that shiny Kartana once again. I quickly got into the rhythm of this hunt and it didn't feel that bad. I was surely confident that I'd get this Kartana sometime soon, and if I didn't, I had time. But with the odds in my favor, I should be seeing my navy blue Kartana in no time. It feels like just yesterday that I was bringing this 3DS into school, and any time I had a period off, I'd pull out my 3DS just to get some SRs in before my next class. Now thinking of it, I don't even want to know what my reaction would have been if I got it at school, but ignoring that, the reset counter was climbing fast due to the amount of hours I was putting into this hunt. But as I was doing more and more soft resets, I was gradually feeling more unsure, and the feeling of ambiguity was really starting to build up. Am I really about to go through another 12,000 soft resets just for nothing? How is this even possible with a shiny charm? I was only a thousand resets in, which is completely normal, but those thoughts just got the better of me. Soon enough, I was over odds. Again. But this time, it was shiny charm odds. That's right, I surpassed 1,365 soft resets for this thing, and I was officially over odds again. Again. Whatever, not every hunt is under odds. I should know that. But I kept my head up high, and soft resetted every day like it was the day I'd find it. That was until March 12th, 2022. I actually remember this day quite vividly. It was a Saturday, and I remember sitting on my recliner in the living room softer sitting for Kartana. It was around 5 o'clock p.m., and quite honestly, I was getting pretty tired. I was at 13,910 soft resets, and I made myself this promise. Once I get to 13,915 soft resets, I'll call it and take a nap. So five resets to go. What can possibly happen during then? Well, uh... There it is. Finally. <laughs> Finally! My longest hunt has ceased. Right there. 13,914 soft resets for a shiny Kartana. Finally. <laughs> Finally. Oh my god, this thing's so beautiful. I started this hunt four years back. A little more than four years back. In November of 2017 and I went for two months I did 12,000 resets and I gave up 
and I resumed it. <laughs> oh my god, and on my, on my 13,914th reset, I finally got the damn shiny. That's right, 13,914 soft resets, I finally got this thing. Hopefully you recall me mentioning that I would take a break at 13,915 soft resets and I got it at 13,914 soft resets. So literally one reset before I was about to finish up for the day, I found this thing. How lucky is that? Had I called it like five minutes earlier, I would have never known that a shiny Cortana was just around the corner waiting to be claimed. I'm so happy I got this. This is my favorite Ultra Beast and now my most notorious shiny hunt all finished. Wait. Not finished yet. I have to catch this thing, so let me waste no more of your time and transition back to that. This is a Jolly Aber, by the way. Um, I'm not sure what I want to do, I think. What I'm going to try to do, though, is, one, not fail this shiny. Two, um, Thunder Wave it and get into a Heavy Ball. I only have one Heavy Ball, unfortunately, but... Um, you know, if not, then Beast Balls exist. Uh, yeah, and I like how that looks, so. I got it at 1 HP, full swiped it. I uh, had the heal a lot, because I didn't want to proc its Beast Boost, because um, that just can increase chance of me failing if it wipes out my entire team. So I have this, um, move, this Roto Catcher here. Uh, right there. So, increases the chances of catching a Pokemon a lot. So I'm gonna try to use this, I don't know, and then use a Heavy Ball. Actually, um, so yeah, that, that's why I didn't want it, um, killing my deal. Got this back in August. Level Ball. Beauty. Um, so I just used the catch. Um, if this doesn't work, I have a Master Ball for backup, but if this doesn't work, I have uh, Beast Balls, which actually look pretty nice, but Heavy Ball kind of goes with its kind of like typing, and it's gray as well, so it's Critical Catcher? No, let's see. Nah, damn it. That's going to kill me, obviously. Yeah, Cartoon is actually really light, so I didn't really expect it to get it, but it would have been nice if it did. I do have Beast Balls though. I can try a Lure Ball. Um, this is a Modest Lunal and a Moon Ball. I thought this was pretty cool. But um, yeah, I have uh, Beast Balls of 90 of these, so I don't have to worry about that. I have um, a Lure Ball as well, which kind of goes well if it's blue. And it's an Apricot Ball, so I can try it. If not, we're just gonna go Beast Ball because it is Navy Blue. One. Okay. What a beautiful shiny, though, honestly. All right, yeah, I have, I don't. All right, we're just gonna be spoiled. This is probably gonna catch since I have the catching power and I have the cartoon paralyzed at one HP. Oh, man. One, two, three. Woo! <laughs> finally, 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 finally. Oh my god. Yes! Jolly. Cable taking hits. So I guess that's defensive IVs. But look at that thing. Oh my god. Finally, dude. Finally! With its moves. Blah, 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 blah. Wow. Holy sh**. <laughs> I went really over odds to this thing, so I wouldn't really consider this too lucky, but oh, much, a very rewarding shiny, and I don't know where I'm going to go after this, uh, my god. It's over. I, I caught the Cartana. This honestly feels so surreal. I never imagined that I would see a shiny Cartana on my Ultra Sun file, but I, I have it. After everything I went through, this Cartana always felt like a mere mirage to me. Not anymore though, this thing's tangible now. 
I really wish I caught my live reaction to this shiny on video, however, I wasn't doing YouTube back then, so I didn't really feel the need. I actually only recorded my reaction so I can show it off to my friends. I just still cannot grasp how many resets it took to find this thing. 13,914 is absolutely insane. I think if you add it up, I went 4 times over odds for the shiny if you add the non-shiny charm and shiny charm odds together, but I don't know. It's pretty tricky to calculate something like that. But here's something else that isn't as difficult to calculate, but I believe is worth mentioning. There's a wicked awesome website you all should check out that calculates the probability of finding a shiny Pokemon given a set amount of resets. Basically, it shows you how likely you are to see a shiny Pokemon after a certain amount of encounters. Hopefully that makes sense, it's a pretty cool tool. I should have never looked this up, but do you want to see my luck? Punching in the roughly 12,000 encounters I did 4 years back without a shiny charm shows that I had a 94.66% chance of finding the shiny in a 5.34% chance of not finding it. Guess what side I ended up on? That's not all, if you add the 1914 resets I did with the shiny charm, the website calculates that I had a 75.4% chance of finding it, which only then I eventually did. So overall, Anthony has horrible luck, this is a cool tool, go check it out. Now let's get back to Ultra Sun so I can show this thing off. And while doing that, I want to explain this. I decided to do something that I typically don't do to my other shiny Pokemon I catch. That's right, I gave it a nickname. Now before I even started the hunt four years back, I already knew what the nickname was going to be. Because I thought I'd get it. There's no point in building any suspense because you've probably already seen it if you made it this far in the video. I decided to name it Navy. Why? Because it has navy blue on it and it's military themed so it sounds pretty badass for a Pokemon like Kartana. So meet Navy, my shiny Kartana, and he's gonna kick some ass on the VGC 2018 ranked ladder. Don't tell him it's 2023. Do you know what would be even better? Transferring it up to Scarlet and Violet? Wait, what's this? Erm, um, Anthony, your channel is not funny. And Ultra Beasts are not in Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. Whoa, last part of the video? That was fast. I know, I know. Contain your excitement. I have one more thing left to say. But before I finish up, let me thank you so much for making it this far and enjoying the video because there's definitely more to come. OG AnthMag72 enjoyers know what part of the video this is. Analogous to my Nihiligo video, it's time to explain the name origin of Cortana. So here we go. Kartana, a combination of the two words card and katana. Hey guys, what's up? Happy Independence Day. Thank you so much for watching the video and for your patience. It really means the world to me. I'm on summer break right now, so hopefully I can pump out a couple more videos before I go back to school. I already have them all planned out, and all I really need to do is put those ideas into action. So I'll update you guys like always the closer the videos are to being finished. I'm really excited for them and for the future of this channel in general, so hopefully you guys share the same enthusiasm as I do right now. I think I already know what the answer will be, but since I checked 9 Haligo and Cartana off the list, would you be interested in a video of me finishing off the remaining shiny Ultra Beasts? I figured I'd compile the rest of them all into one video as a big project, so let me know if that sounds cool. All in all, thank you so much for watching and for all of your support these past months, it's been awesome. Well, I think that's all I have to say. Have an amazing day, make sure to rate 5 stars, and- OH WAIT! I have one more announcement. Nuestro office is the room. Him seems to have a lot of astonishing series in the national level.